sides of the stretcher, kneel down next to it. So if we have a violent patient, I have a small barrier between us, which could help a little bit to protect me from any uh, swinging that he would do with his fists or his legs. And when you fasten the straps, push on the plastic and pull on the strap. If you're on the side away from the buckles, it makes it very easy to adjust. After the strap is tightened as far as you want it, be sure and tuck it inside the stretcher so you don't step on it when you're trying to carry the uh, stretcher. It's very important because if you trip and fall, your patient could get injured and so can you. To secure the foot end, pull it up, put your foot behind it, and that holds it in position when you're trying to fasten the uh, lower foot end straps. Bring this foot end strap from the inside of the stretcher outward through the lower unused grommet, then back to the buckle that's on the strap right at the foot end. and adjust it just like you would the others. Notice the space below the patient's heels. If you lift him in that position with his feet on the leading edge of the stretcher, that could cause uh, a lot of discomfort on the back of the leg because his heels would sink down into the stretcher and it would be very uncomfortable, sometimes painful. Loosen the foot end straps and pull the foot end down so that you'll have some room below the feet. Take all of the equipment that you don't need on the rescue and place it inside the bag. Put the lid down inside the bag and roll the bag up with the straps on the inside. This way you don't lose anything. You take it all with you when, when the patient is raised up out of the hole. Place the bag below the patient's heels. that time tighten the straps and the patient has a solid surface to stand on and this will prevent any pain behind his legs and it'll take all the equipment with you so you don't lose anything. Normally when we rig this stretcher for a vertical lift We'll start the rope through the top end of the sked, and that is done if you have enough room for one or two people to stand the sked up on the ends and you can do the lifting. In this case, uh, we'll simulate that there isn't enough room for two people to get in there, and you don't have room to stand the thing up by yourself. So what we'll do is we'll pass the rope through the grommets in the shoulder area, and we'll pull it down to where the knot is level with the top end of the sked, just lay it over the top end, make sure that it's in the center, then pass the rope down through the handles, through the two grommets in the waist area, or by the thighs, pull it snug so you don't have any possibility of losing the position of the knot. Then you pass the rope through the handles again, through both loops on handles. Then inside the stretcher,
and down next to the feet by the patient's heels there's another grommet at the bottom you pass the rope outward through the grommet after both ropes are rigged in this manner we'll tie the ropes in a square knot be sure the rope is underneath the stretcher so you tie your square knot and all this does is bring the uh, ends of the rope together so there's a sling for the patient to stand in at that point you insert the rope through the carrying handles from the outside inward be sure the rope comes up next to the feet over the foot end of the stretcher and at that point you tie another square knot but in this case it has to be safetyed off with the overhand knot on each end or if you make a mistake and tie a half hitch accidentally tie two half hitches in this case we're tying a square knot now and I will purposely tie a half hitch on the other side if you do that tie a second one because we don't want to have any chance that anything could slip and side load that that knot I would put my life on that knot any time uh, an alternate knot would be a double fisherman's which we won't show here okay I've secured it to an overhand knot now which is the better way to go